Welcome to Alloway Parish Church. Wherever you're viewing from, it's great to have you along. Let us worship God. Our first hymn, the 23rd Psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd to Brother James Eyre. Hello again, it's great to be able to share with you again. Let us draw close to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Father, as we come before you in this special time of worship, we ask that you still our hearts, that you open our minds, and that you make us truly aware of the presence of your Holy Spirit. As a fellowship of your people, we join together through the wonders of technology to praise your name and to worship you. We long to hear your message for our lives, that we might embrace it and that we might live more each day according to the example of Jesus, our Saviour. In all aspects of our lives, we are surrounded by examples of your love for us in the message of Scripture in the splendor of your creation, in the wonders of medicine and in the fellowship and care of our family and our friends. Father, in humble prayer, we offer you our thanks and ask that you help us always to be able to recognize your love for us, even in these most challenging times. Be with us always, we pray. 
Glorious Father, we give you thanks for fulfilling your promise to us in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. You sent Jesus that he might live on earth as God incarnate and that he might be sacrificed on the cross to pay the price for our sins that we may be together with you. Father, accept our humble thanks, we pray. Despite being aware of the sacrifice of your Son, each day we fail to live according to your word and to the example of Jesus. We fail to show compassion to those most in need and we place our wants and wishes before the needs of others. We fail to forgive others and yet expect unconditional forgiveness from you. We fail to be patient and gentle even, the, even with those just needing someone to talk to. And we fail to set aside time to read your word and to come before you in prayer. Father, we ask that you forgive us all for all of our shortcomings and help us each day to live according to your message and to strive to be the people that you want us to be. Merciful Father, accept these prayers through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and hear us as we pray together in the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, here we are again, and I do have my bag, but I'm going to keep you in suspense just for a few moments. If you joined us last week, you will remember that I was talking about cycling and how I took up cycling during the last summer. And I really enjoy cycling, though I've got to admit it was much more difficult than I remembered from my childhood when I went out riding on my rally chopper. But I really enjoy going out on my bike. There's one type of exercise, however, that I don't enjoy at all, and I never have enjoyed it, and that is running. To me, going out running is pure agony. It's like torture. So you can imagine my reaction a few years ago when my 12-year-old son said to me, Dad, would you like to run a 5K race with me? I was horrified. But, you know, parents don't like to let their children down. So I agreed to run the race with my son. And I finished the race. And I've got evidence to prove it. And it's in my bag. So firstly, I've got to show you my medal. And I know quite a few of you will be zooming in just to check. It's not an Olympic medal. But no, it's not an Olympic medal. But I got this for completing the 5K race. And I did it in about half an hour, which I thought wasn't too bad. Other evidence to show you, I've got my number from the race that was pinned to my shirt. And finally, I have got the story in print in no less a publication than the Ayrshire Post. Can you believe it? And there's a wee photo of me and my son as we finished the race. Now, at the beginning of the race, it was great and we were all excited. And at the end of the race, it was also great because everyone was cheering. But in between, it was murder. It was terrible running up and down the hills. My legs were aching. My chest was tight. It felt as if I couldn't get a breath of air. I didn't enjoy it one bit. But I only managed it because my son cheered me on. The other racers encouraged me and told me to keep going. And the crowds that had gathered along the route encouraged everyone that was running to keep on going. 
I had to endure the pain. I had to be determined. I had to keep on going until I finished the race. And it was quite difficult. And life can be like that at times. Sometimes life is great and everything seems to be fantastic. And other times it can be quite challenging. We suffer from poor health or our family does. We experience bereavement or job loss or we have financial worries. And sometimes it's just tough. And we've got to keep on going. And usually we can only do it with the support of our family and our friends and folk at church. And of course, we also can do it sure in the knowledge that God is always with us and that we can keep on going. Just this week, we had a wonderful example of someone enduring and we were remembered of the efforts of Captain Sir Tom Moore, who died on the 2nd of February. And at the age of 99, he wanted to do a hundred lengths of his garden to raise money for the NHS. And he kept on going. He was determined and he wanted to do it. And at the end of the day, he raised, putting the donations and the tax rebate together, he raised £39 million. What a great example of determination and commitment to keep on going until he had completed his hundred lengths of his garden. A fantastic example. If you're feeling that life is difficult at the moment, I would encourage you to keep on going, to fight and be determined that things will get better. And accept the help of your family, your friends, folk from church, and be assured that God is always beside you, putting his arm around you, encouraging you to keep on going and that things will get better. And if you're in the position to help others, perhaps you could write an email or send a letter or lift the phone and call someone or wave in through the window as you're on your daily exercise. What an encouragement that would be to others to keep on going when things might not be so good. So in the days and the weeks ahead, let us all be assured that we can keep going, sure in the knowledge that people will help us and that God is always by our side. Today's reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, reading from verses 27 to 31. The people are comforted. Why do you say, O Jacob? Why do you complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Amen. Thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word. I wonder if you are an ornithologist. I wonder if you are a bird watcher. I wonder if you are Twitcher. Well, to be honest, I'm none of these, except to say I realise how blessed I am living in South Ayrshire. We have many birds for company, and I know it's true that we seem to be losing some species, but can I tell you some of the friends that I might see? We can still see our robin today. 
When I walk the dog, a yellow wagtail. Go to the pond, you'll still see the swans. Perhaps if you're lucky by the river, you'll see the heron. But the one bird we don't see this far north in South Ayrshire is what is known as Scotland's national bird. And that is, of course, the mighty golden eagle. The eagle is an impressive bird. Let me give you some statistics. A wingspan of six and a half feet. In its environment, left alone, it can live up to 23 years old. In the countryside, it is the greatest of all predators. I've mentioned before that the eagle became the symbol for the mighty Roman Empire, a symbol of power, absolute power. I guess if I was to choose a symbol for the New Testament, it wouldn't really be the eagle, it would be the dove. I know we find in the Old Testament the story of Noah and eventually a dove comes back with an olive branch in its beak and this is a symbol of the new future of hope for the world. And as we noted just a couple of weeks ago, it is the dove which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus at baptism. And yet we can't deny in the church you will see an eagle. I am sure throughout this country, throughout the world, there will be lecterns and churches with the eagle spreading the wings in front of the lectern. Do you know why that is? The eagle, they say, is one of the few birds that can look towards the sun and fly in that direction. The eagle, by tradition, is also the bird which flies highest in the air, closest to the heavens. And so, for the Gospel of St. John, the eagle has been chosen as its symbol. And if you are a preacher, you know just how inspirational John's Gospel is. Let's just share a little portion. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. It takes your breath away. Let me tell you a little bit more about the eagle. Its talons and the grip of an eagle said to be ten times stronger than that of a man. Its head can turn round 210 degrees. Maybe you've got a neighbour that can do the same. It is a wonderful creature. And I suspect you know how an eagle teaches its young to fly. It begins, of course, by building up a nest, a very substantial nest, which is very comfortable, in which the eaglets can find security. But there comes a time when the eaglets are encouraged to leave. And if they don't make that decision themselves, then the mother or the father will make it for them with the eaglets nudged out of the nests. And as they fall, and only as they fall, 
they say they learn to fly. And if the wings don't open up, then the mother and father will swoop below and catch the little eaglet and bring it up again. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because our verse for today comes from the book of Isaiah. It's a wonderful verse which speaks of renewal. And here are the terms of that verse. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those who wait on the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm not the most patient of people. When I tend to like things done, I like them done right now. Manufacturers over the years understand that. All the time-saving devices, instant porridge, instant soup. But some things can't be done in an instant. Friendship cannot be done in an instant. A marriage cannot happen overnight. It takes a long time. It takes patience. And if we have to have a renewing relationship to God, we have to learn to be patient. Those who wait on the Lord will indeed be renewed. They will rise up with wings like eagles. But there's a second part to that wonderful verse. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If I'm entirely honest with you, I can't remember the last time I ran, not even for a bus. I'm a great admirer of people who can run. And I'll tell you, when it comes to runners, and in terms of spiritual giants, there's one person I think of, and that's Eric Little. I'm sure you know the story of Eric Little, a wonderful runner, all his preparations for the 100 metres in the 1924 Olympics, and then he discovers all this work he's put in for this moment. The heats are being run on a Sunday. And so he withdraws from that race, but enters other races, the 200 and the 400 meter. Now, he was not the favorite for the 400 meters. Again, background, he himself had great Christian faith. He was uh, a missionary and he was going to go back to China. I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, in a moment. But Eric Little had a wonderful saying. Let me share it with you. I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. It seems to me that Eric Liddell's life radiated God's love. Everyone who encountered him seemed to be impressed by his great faith and his great personal integrity. And there's that moment which I really find interesting in the race where allegedly someone came up to him just before he starts the 400 metres and gives him a little scripture. It comes from the Old Testament. 
I will honour those who honour me. And so Eric Little runs into our history books. He breaks the 400 metre record with a time which would stand for 12 years. And I think it's very interesting because David Putnam in the 1981 film has Eric Little preaching on this very verse that we are thinking of this morning. What would this verse mean to someone who was such a runner? And yet it's not just for his speed. Very sadly, 1925, I believe, Eric Little would return. He would go back to China. He would be interred in a Japanese camp. He was known for his great acts of kindness in that camp. And he himself would die in 1945. Although people say there was an opportunity he could have been released. But he insisted someone else took his place. They will run and not grow weary. Now, I know what you're thinking. You can't possibly run and I can't possibly run the way Eric Little did. To me, and perhaps compared to you as well, he is a spiritual giant. But one thing I do share with Eric Little is this great belief that God has made you and God has made me for a purpose. And that purpose, you know, is more than surviving a global pandemic, which is important. I don't know exactly the purpose that God has made you for, but I suspect it will involve giving rather than taking. It will involve serving rather than being served. And I do believe this, that the same God that renewed him in spirit awaits now to renew us in spirit. For God still honours those who honour him. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen.
We unite our hearts in prayer together. Let us pray. God of the universe, we thank you for your many good gifts, for the beauty of creation and its rich and varied fruits, for clean water, fresh air, for food and shelter, animals and plants, for birds soaring in the skies. Help us to grow deeper in our respect of your world. Help us to recognize the sacredness of all of your creatures as signs of your wondrous love. Help us to turn from the selfish consumption of resources meant for all and make us mindful of the impacts of our choices on the poor and vulnerable. Lord Jesus, you came to the world to teach us how to serve and not to be served. Your spirit still comes to renew us and make us strong. Be with those who seek to embody your kingdom and do your work. Especially just now, we pray, Lord God, for scientists and researchers, for those seeking to understand the challenges we face in the global pandemic, for those creating potential vaccines, those advising decision makers. We pray for all those who shape the common life, for health and healing, for nourishment and generosity, for shelter and compassion. We pray for laughter and love. With tenderness, always we remember those who are in the front line. For those who care for the living and the dying. And we remember with tenderness the bereaved. Lord God, draw near. And come to us, we pray, in the week ahead. Renew us by your Spirit. And renew in us our resolve to make the world a better place. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. We close our service singing together I will lift you up on eagle's wings.
to his angels he's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. We say the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.